Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to the show. So it's been a busy old week. We've had the Data and AI Europe breakout session and conference thing, and there's been lots and lots of stuff going on. Now, there were two big morning keynotes, and that had a load of announcements, a load of news, a load of stuff. Uh, and so I want to take this session just to kind of talk through some of those announcements, some of them we know about, some of them we've already covered little bits of, some of them are fairly new. So I'll just take a moment, step through those different articles, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, other bits and pieces, obviously, yes, we're getting near Christmas, and I know it's November. I know that a lot of people sighing, going, please, not yet, just wait until it's December. But no, it's 2020. It's been a horrendous year for many. I've got myself a little mint Christmas tree for my office, and I'm going to start decorating from next week. So you will see that in ongoing streams. Um, also, we've got a few Christmas plans, or a few festive plans. So we'll be doing a few things uh, on the channel in December, and we'll kind of tell you about that next week. All right, so on with the news, on with stuff. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you found was good about the Data and AI Summit, things that you wish you had been covered, any topics that you found a little bit about, and you're like, oh, I'd like to know more than that. Just let us know, and we'll line up a video, right? Okay, so first things first, I want to talk about being a Databricks partner for a moment. So Advancing Analytics, that's the consultancy that Tammy McCann and I run in the UK with clients all over the place in the US and Europe and various different places. Um, we are a Databricks partner and we didn't used to be. So we became a Databricks partner right at the start of this year. And we've been working with Databricks and Spark and all that kind of stuff for years. We were a Microsoft partner, but it's our first year as a Databricks partner. Um, and it's been interesting. It's been a whole change of pace. It's been great having someone from Databricks actually, when we go and speak to clients, when we work through problems, having someone we can pick up the phone with and say, hey, what's going on? This thing autoloader has just been released. How do we work with it? What's the best way? Any any gotchas we should look for? Hey, SQL Analytics is coming. What should we know about? How do we prepare? How do we work with that? So we were super, super honored to be a launch partner for the SQL Analytics, which launched on Wednesday was the official keynote release and we saw a video uh, and that was because we got to see it early as a Databricks partner, which is fantastic. And even better, we were awarded a Partner Champion Award. So that was on Tuesday. There was a Partner Executive Summit. And really, really honored that uh, I was honored as a Partner Champion for doing this, for all the YouTube, for all the content, and for a lot of the... I spent a lot of time talking to the guys at Databricks about what we think, what our clients think, how we work. So awesome, awesome ecosystem there. Now stop blowing the Databricks trumpets, and we can talk about, well, I guess other Databricks things, news, releases, things that they have pushed out. So let's have a look. Okay, so we've got the Databricks blog site, and they kind of do this every time there's a Data and AI Summit. It's like all the press releases get released at once. It's just like the morning of the summit, you go on the blog, and it's like, oh, well, there's seven new press releases about all the things they're going to be talking about today. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there. So. One, just take a look, go and have a peek through the various different things. There's a couple that I want to pull out in particular. So the first thing, and I've kind of, we've poked at this before because this uh, was released last week when they first kind of made an official public announcement about SQL Analytics. And the Wednesday keynote, this was kind of the big ticket item, right? They were talking a lot about SQL Analytics, this whole new workspace within Databricks they can now go to and it's for that SQL persona. So it's going along the lake house vision. It's going along this idea that, yes, Spark is great for data engineers. Yes, Spark is great for data scientists, but you know what? We can get people who are less Python-y, less Scala and R and less programmatic and more traditional SQL data analysts. There is a space for them. And that's historically been the weak point in the Databricks Spark style um, story. So having this new workspace in there where you can go and write queries, it's a better SQL ID, it has better autocomplete in Telesense if you're coming from Microsoft. It's got all those things to try and basically give a warm welcome to anyone coming from the SQL side. And as I said in the video we did on Wednesday, we'll do more videos about that. We'll dig into it. More details coming there anyway. But yeah, that's obviously one of the big stories from this week. So we won't talk much about that. That's that's good. That's happy. Uh, ML flow. So we've seen lots and lots of ML flow, and ML flow is this um, regular regular feature in all of the uh, data and AI Spark and AI conferences. 
It's kind of a big flagship way of productionizing machine learning. If you've not done much with uh, MLflow, we do have a video from Terry, uh, which I kind of uh, put a link to so you can go and have a look at that. But there's a few new features that have been rolled up uh, that are now going GA. And a big one of that is the model registry. So if you have a machine learning model that you've trained and you've done experimentation and you've you know, tried it with different data sets, different parameters, you've tweaked it a few times, um, MLflow, people kind of get, they kind of understand this thing, is going to keep track of all these different experiments. And that just makes sense. It's great. So we can say, wait, when we got when we got 91% accuracy, which one was that? Which, which parameter did we use? And it's no longer just having, trying to have a remember and trying to go back in variance of the code. It's a, you can go to MLflow and go, give me the version of the code at that time, the data that was used at that point, give me the parameter set that was used, give me the logging from that experiment. I want to use that particular code set. Now that's fantastic. Now, the next level, the next evolution of that is being able to track the outputs of that. So being able to say, I've produced a model, this model. Now I've made a new model. And it's actually taking these model artifacts, these trained machine learning algorithms have been serialized into a model and saying, actually, I want to promote that one to live. I want to have these three in staging, measure them against each other. I want to promote that one and have a whole workflow around which of my various models are in production and which aren't. And that is now baked into MLflow, just me made GA. So as you're working through this, there's a lot of things that we can do to improve that experience, to add in the ability to put comments and things, there's a whole workflow, the webhook stuff, really, really cool. So if you're looking at, at the moment, I when I promote a model to a certain state, like when I promote a model to production, that should trigger a load of events. It should turn trigger a something going into Slack with the demo the guys did in the keynote, but that could also be kicking off a DevOps pipeline. It could be updating a load of documentation. It could be actually kicking off a whole other data workflow. The moment I actually productionize a model, take my existing data set and run a batch scoring job against it. All of that kind of stuff you can now do, which is really, really cool. Um, and there's lots of things in there around wrapping things automatically. Produce an API on top of your model so you can do live scoring. Lots and lots of things like that. So tons and tons of detail starts to get into the data science -y thing. And so I'll let Terry do those videos. I'm very much on the engineering side, but definitely worth having a look. There's loads of cool features in MRflow that are being added to constantly inside Databricks. So awesome stuff. And then finally, this thing, the next generation data science workspace, which I keep having to grumble. I grumbled several times. Why is it a data science workshop, a workspace? It's, it's like data scientists aren't the only people who use Git and actually want to have good version control and source control inside notebooks, inside Databricks. Um, this thing's really cool. And don't dismiss it if you're not a data scientist, because this is a, you know what, let's make notebooks and the whole Git source control experience work way better for everybody, not just data scientists. And there's loads of stuff in there. And essentially there's a whole workflow. Do we have got some pictures of the thing? So that kind of go, so there are lots of little little nice uh, dev environment style of things. Essentially, um, they're kind of adding some features into the whole notebook experience inside Databricks to make it a little bit more like your favorite IDE. So things like being able to get kind of uh, various states of what's going on, tensor boards, really, really cool. Uh, dark mode. I mean, if you're going after developers, then just put dark mode in it and everyone's going to be super happy. Uh, so dark mode, great. Although not very good for presenting and doing video. So I might just have to have dark mode for when I'm actually building things and then a nice white mode for when I'm presenting to you guys. Um, and then things like this. So things like being say, be able to say, I want to spin up a new project. Project. Basically saying, there's a Git branch. I want to go to this particular branch of that Git branch, spin, clone it into my workspace as a set of notebooks and various things. I want to then do some dev on it. And then I want to do a diff and say, I want to, what code changes have I made? Basically, how far has it drifted from that branch? And hopefully be able to do proper actual Git workflow stuff. So I am hoping and praying we'll get to the point when I can go, you know what? I'm building a load of engineering stuff. I've got a load of engineering uh, workflows that live as notebooks because they're actually really good for support teams to understand the steps that a, a, a data process went through. I'm going, oh, I need to change that one open a new feature branch, 
clone it into a new project inside the Dedibricks workspace, make my changes, test them, get them to the point where I'm happy, and then commit that change, sync it back in, pull request that feature branch back into the main uh, code library, and then I'm done. And that that is just the story of how we work anyway, but currently it's a manually take a thing, make a copy of it, maybe sync that one to a branch, or even just, you know what, just make my changes on the fly and then have to revert them. The story isn't good currently. So this actually enables us to get closer to that actual good application development lifecycle kind of process. Come on, please. Um, so there's a staging and diff view. There's lots of stuff in there. And you can do security around who's allowed to do various things, who's allowed to create the clone, who's allowed to check things in. All good stuff. So that I am very, very excited about. And, you know, they've, they've kind of been talking about this at every Spark Summit for a little while now. It's been kind of, we've been hearing rumblings of Workspace 2.0. They mentioned this um, in the Spark AI Summit in the summer. But finally, finally, we have a date. They said, we're going to be getting these features within two months. That was kind of big part of the keynote. Within two months, we're going to see some of these features inside the Databricks workspace. Whether that's, we'll see them in a gated private preview, whether we'll see them in public preview, whether they will be out and usable in production, we'll see. I mean, you never use this in production, really, so. Uh. But even so, I am super, super excited about that, because that kind of quality of life of the development experience, without using things like DB Connect and going into PyCharm or VS Code or whatever your preferred environment is, it's not great currently. Um, so that just as a as a measure of improvement from everything that I've listed in there, it looks like a marked improvement in terms of what we currently do. So hopefully, hopefully we will see it very, very soon. Should be very, very cool. And yeah, kind of watch this space, kind of hopefully. Um, yeah. So they're the main points. They're the main things I wanted to put across. There's a few other bits and pieces, some things around PyTorch, but I am not qualified to go into that. So I'll let Terry talk about those things when he does his next video catching up. And yeah, I guess from next week onwards, we'll be talking probably a little bit of a dive into SQL Analytics, look at some Photon stuff, try and have a bit of a play, try and break it. Lots of questions coming out. I've had a flood of questions over the last few days since I even put that video out and since last week when we put the, uh, the blog out, just saying, can I do this? Does it work like that? Can I do that with that thing? Can I expose a query as a data object to a BI tool? Can I actually query the lake directly from it or does that have to come from Hive? So there's loads and loads of questions about what we can and can't do in this new SQL analytics environment. And I'll work through some of those questions and try and get some good solid answers and try and prove out how it works. But also it is still in preview. So it's still gonna change. There's gonna be some features where we go, okay, it works like that. And then it flexes underneath us because it's a preview product. That's kind of how preview works. But again, we'll try and get to the bottom of it and we'll make it very, very clear. So if you've got any of those questions, if you're looking at some of these things and you saw the last video, you've seen the demos, you watched the keynote, and you're still there going, I don't know, where does it fit? Who does that, who does that bit? And who does that bit? What happens if I, any of those kind of questions, I'll leave them in the comments and I'll just tee up a load of videos and try and work through them as we can. Otherwise, you guys have a lovely time and we'll catch you next week. Cheers.